Hey, 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 get away from there. See, you're one of them dogs that likes to eat anything and everything. And when you see something on the ground that looks like you can chew on it, I'm over here, boy. Don't act like you're not paying attention to me. You need to learn not to eat that stuff. Yeah, you. Leave it alone. You can't have it. And if you have your little dog out in the shop, or maybe your big dog out in the shop, and or out in your garage at home, make sure that your dog doesn't start nibbling and chewing on stuff he shouldn't be chewing on down on the floor. Kind of like this right here. Give me that. Now that's got paint and everything all over it, boy. And that's why you don't come out here with me a lot. Because you're a little troublemaker. There's a lot of stuff on the floors of your garage or maybe in your shop that your pets shouldn't be playing with. So be careful and be cautious. If you love your little dog like my friend Pete loves his, you will be paying attention. Basically, why my little dog is out here in the shop on a Sunday morning is because basically we are working on basically our basic 1969 Roadrunner. And if you look at this car, you can see it's a big, long automobile. I don't know, what is the thing, 18 feet long or something? It's fucking giant. Yeah. And we did a record block sanding of this yesterday. We started at about 10 o'clock in the morning yesterday. We were done at about 6.30 last night. And we're not talking just block sand, we're talking 400 wet. Why are you taking that off? Because there's big water. Well, don't throw that plastic away. We need to keep that thing covered in plastic. He wants it covered in plastic. Yes, and we'll put more plastic on. Well, I just say, put that it's back. It's all wet, Pete. You don't want to put this wet, wet Man, plastic on there. That's a pain in the ass to put all that on there. I'll do it. <laughs> Motherfucker. I'm not, I'm not having you bitch when you go no. spray paint water blows up on your fresh paint. Speaking of spraying paint, what the owner did, Rick the glass guy, because this is his car and that's what we're talking about, he went ahead and painted all that inside and then he was going to close it down and put foam tape on it and then paint the outside, but what the situation is that you got, even if you put foam tape on it, this is what happens. And then another thing that happens if you paint it inside and out and you put foam tape on it, this is what happens get a tape line. So really the best thing to do is basically paint the deck lid separate from the car itself. So what we're going to do, we'll take the deck lid off, we're going to block sand that on the inside, wet sand it down or whatever, scuff it down, we'll hang that up and paint it separate. That way what we'll do, we'll tape it off right here and then after we tape that off, we'll go ahead and do that and then all this will be sprayed normal and we won't have overspray like Rick the glass guy got right here. So if you're doing a car like this, remember that uh, foam tape really doesn't work as good as you think. When it's a really big gap, yeah, right? the foam tape isn't enough. You've got to tape and paper under the foam yeah, but see, even in when you order put... not to get this. Right. But the best way to do it, really, the best way to use foam tape is we are actually going to put the foam tape on the jam where we want it. And then we'll take two inch tape and tape the foam tape down to the door jam. That way the foam tape won't blow out of place. Because that's the problem with foam tape is that it is a sticky adhesive tape, but the situation is, is after it's been sitting on there too long, especially on these overall paint jobs, the tape tends to blow off and then you got overspray all over in your jam. All right, so if you take your two inch, if you take your foam tape and you want to foam tape your jam, of course there's overspray right here, so we're going to go past that spot right there and we're going to go down to where the primer is. Do you see what I'm doing, Manny? 
And Axel, he sees that bright yellow tape. Look at him. Okay, so once that's done, then what you would do is you take your bright yellow tape that your dog loves to play with. You want that. Well, you can't have it. All right, and then what you would do is you come on the inside just like this. You can see what I'm doing here. And then what that's doing, that's pulling that tape, and now you can see right there where it'll hold it in place and it won't fall off. And then when you shut your door, now what you got is a nice edge there. Of course, if you went and got overspray right here, the tape would be up here instead of down there, but we want to... We're trying to eliminate his fucking problems. At my fucking expense! This was a swap-out deal. So or a buddy gonna, deal. So now you're gonna get mad about Who's getting mad? I'm just saying. Yeah, all of a sudden, turning in Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hodge. Dr. Jekyll? Who the fuck is that? Now, one thing I do want to uh, recommend is taping a door jam off is very important is when you find that line right here. You see what I'm saying, Minnie? Yes, Minnie. You don't want to put the tape out here like somebody, we don't want to mention names, did, well, did the you last want time. The primer? You wanted the primer to go in there. Well, we didn't want the primer to go in there. Okay, but so that's what why happened? the tape Oh, oh, oh that's edge. why you did it that way. Okay. Well, of course, Pete. All right. And then, now, there is an edge here. I can feel that if you can put the camera. I can hear it. Do you hear it? Yeah. So what we'll do is we'll... I told you last night that all the edges need to be sanded. Right. And that's what you're doing over there. That's what I was going to well, tell everybody. Well, I was going to be doing. That's what so I was going to tell. I was going to tell everybody that's camera. what you're doing. That's what you're doing. Yeah. And so what we'll do is we'll take some 320C and... Let you insinuate that I fucked up. That up. Who said anything about that? Who's insinuating anything? I didn't insinuate nothing. You were over here sanding. I mean, I had to show them what you were doing. Okay? Yeah. That's all we were doing. Just showing them. And then, besides that, besides that, what we did, besides that, uh, we went ahead and painted our truck bed for our 1966 uh, Chevy truck, because I want to get this fucking thing out of here. So, we went ahead and sanded that whole fucking car, wet sanded it with 400 yesterday, and I went ahead and painted our 1966 truck bed inside and out, and let me tell you something, painting this fucking thing is almost as bad as painting the whole fucking car. We painted our tailgate. We went ahead and painted the floor runners inside and out. Now these floor runners, these are, the, these are the pieces that go in between the wood and we painted them top and bottom. So that's what you call wastefulness fucking painting right here when you're painting this shit because most of the paint that you're spraying goes in the air and is not used. So what you're looking at right there is a very, 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 very big paint job. So we did a lot of work yesterday. We uh, accomplished a lot and we got a lot done because that's the situation that we got. Are we gonna paint our Roadrunner today? No, it's a big fucking paint job in itself. All right, I better get to work with Minnie, get this thing done. I gotta get the deck lid off and get it in the paint booth, start taping it off. Get her done, got her done, it is done and it's done fucking right. We'll see you later, take it easy. And we'll be back with our fucking green, lime green Roadrunner. The buddy deal. That isn't going bad. Take it easy.
getting ready to paint our Roadrunner. This is our uh, body deal systematic uh, fucking situation we got here. Now, I want to say that Rick did a hell of a good fucking job on this car. Restoring the car at home, doing it all by himself. And doing a great fucking job on the bodywork, the rust repair, and everything else that he's done to it. And uh, he's a good example of doing it yourself and doing it at home and making it the way that you want it to be. And what Rick has done here, he's fucking realized that if I want to keep it looking good and I want it to be the way that I want it to be, Sometimes you got to let the fucking professional finish it out for you or do a certain job for you so you can finish it out to get her done and do it right. What I did is he's got a gallon and a half of paint here and I went ahead and mixed all that paint together and made sure that all the colors match and I took a half a gallon. If you look inside there, there's a half a gallon. What I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead and mix up a sprayable gallon of paint and what that requires is uh, half half paint and half reducer so we'll go ahead and fill this up with reducer it's going to take a lot of paint to paint this car this car is 17 fucking feet long it's a 1969 roadrunner so you're talking 17 feet this way 17 feet that way 17 feet this way and back and forth and then you got front and back and it's a big fucking paint job so instead of talking and bullshitting let's go ahead and get in there and get some fucking paint on the fucking car There you go. Three full wet coats of paint, three full wet coats of clear. And it is looking beautiful. What I'm really amazed of is that Rick only paid a thousand dollars for this car and took it from being a parts car, a junkyard car that's been sitting out in the back of somebody's yard and turning it into a beautiful machine like this. Rick the glass guy did a great fucking job and I think everybody needs to shake a hand and make a friend with this guy because this is where it really shows what kind of job he really did when you look down the side of these big old fucking boats and it looks flawless. There's no ripples or waves in it. The bodywork is done very, very nicely, very equipped and very efficient and uh, it just looks great. He was talking about the roof panel was the most serious damaged part on the vehicle. Uh, this corner right here was crushed in. It looked like somebody took a sledgehammer to it, crushed it in, and Rick took it upon himself to fix it, and it really came out nice. You can't even tell that uh, anything was ever wrong with it. One problem he ran into is the materials he was using. He was using very cheap, inexpensive primers, and I had to go ahead and completely reprime the whole vehicle over after I blocked it down dry with 80 and 180 because the primer that he was using was such cheap, inexpensive bullshit that 
painting it with that primer would have been a very, very big mistake on a vehicle like this. You can see that I painted those as well and made those very, very shiny. I went ahead and put three full wet coats of paint and clear on the rocker panels themselves. That's a place where a lot of people miss. Even Rick missed that and forgot all about it because he was worried about getting overspray on the bottom of the car. And as we're talking about the bottom of the fucking car, I want you to pay close attention when I tell you this. Do not restore the bottom of your fucking car until after the car is painted. You're wasting your time, you're wasting your materials, and you're just plain simple wasting your time. Paint the fucking car first, then back tape the body of the car, cover it with plastic, and then fucking detail out the fender wells and the bottom of your car. Because you are just fucking wasting your time, wasting your money, and plain wasting it away on doing the underneath of the car first instead of painting it. But I will tell you one thing that I really, really like about this car, and that is I would rather paint this big old fucking car before I paint another one of these fucking truck beds. Believe it or not, I use twice the paint and twice the clear painting this fucking truck bed, this eight foot truck bed, and it took me twice as long to do it. We also went ahead and painted the tailgate as well, along with these fucking runners here that go in the bed between the fucking wood. And believe it or not, we're not even done painting that truck. We still have to paint the rear fenders and the running boards on that truck. I would rather paint a fucking 17 foot bomb than I would an eight foot truck bed. Next thing we're going to do to this car, we're going to go ahead and let it dry for a couple days. Let it cure real good. Let the clear and everything that we've done to it shrink down and get nice and uh, uh, dry. And then we'll come back and we'll go ahead and color sand and buff it. And I think my friend Pete will be done with it. Uh, we got us a black stripe that's going to go in the center there where it's taped off because the hood's going to be black and he wants to run that black straight into the dash. So we'll do that after it's all color sand buffed because we're going to use a semi-gloss paint on that that does not get buffed. And once you paint that, there's nothing else you can do with it but leave it like it is. So now that I think about it, we actually still have a lot of fucking work ahead of us on our 1969 Buddy Deal System Roadrunner that is turning out to be a pretty good deal. Uh, I could have let Rick use the paint booth over here. I could have said, hey, you know what? That's the fucking deal we made. You put the glass in my son's Volkswagen and then you used my paint booth. And I could have let him do all the work. I could have done that. I could have been a shyster about it and said, I don't give a fuck what it turns out like. A deal's a deal. But I didn't do that because I am a human being. And every now and then in life, you have to make a step up and, and be the man of the situation and be the guy that's not the fucking asshole. Because that's what the world's all about is helping each other out and getting along, whether you live in Poland, or Greece, or Australia, whether you live in fucking, uh, you know, uh, Bimbambwe, uh, South Africa, or maybe you might live right here in the good old USA. It doesn't matter, all right? The haters will be haters, and the, the likers will be likers. There's nothing you can do about it. But grit your teeth and move down the line to the next project. This is Pete, my friend Pete, your friend Pete. We're gonna get that thing color sand and buffed. I gotta paint the deck lid on it. We still gotta do the fucking hood, which is in raw fiberglass uh, uh, shape right now. We gotta cut these fucking holes out right here. If you look at the shyster fucking situation we got going on this lip here, we gotta clean that up. Block sand it down, paint it black, this, that, and the other, mount it on the fucking car. And then, my friend Pete will shake Rick the glass guy's hand and tell him he did a great fucking job whereas Rick will tell me I did a great job sometimes it's a double team situation when you can't do everything yourself and you feel that you're trapped on the situation get professional help that you can trust it's hard to find a body shop out there that will work with you and not fuck you in your ass we might say because getting the pole in the ass sucks it's a sucky situation, it's a pull in the ass situation dealing with these fucking uh, you know, restoration shops 
and these paint and body shops, these collision shops, most of these places that you go to are out to rip you off and they only think about their self. Do your P's and Q's, do your fucking uh, investigations and do what you gotta do to get her done right. We also learned one thing here that using cheap paint supplies is gonna give you a cheap paint job. You get what you pay for, plain and simple, no question about it. It's just like anything else in the fucking world, that's how life is. I gotta go, it's late, I've been painting this car all fucking day, and I wanna go home. Take it easy.